Hi, everyone. It's Liz. Happy Thanksgiving to those of you who celebrate Thanksgiving. Um, we are actually um, in our home base right now. Um, we typically are abroad during um, many of the holidays over the last six years, but today we happen to be um, in our home base outside of Seattle celebrating um, with my mom and some other you know, relatives um, that are coming over later today. Um, but I wanted to take the opportunity since we have Thanksgiving happen happening now and Christmas coming up and, you know, there's all these other holidays um, throughout the year that you typically celebrate in your hometown, but it might be a little bit more difficult to do um, while you're traveling. So, um, you know, I just want to talk about how to celebrate the hol holidays while you're, you're traveling and world schooling, if you do at all. And, um, you know, so maybe you typically observe uh, Christmas, Thanksgiving in the U.S. or Canada, um, Easter or Ramadan, Rosh Hashanah, Diwali, Chinese New Year's. You know, there's so many holidays that are pretty major um, where we live. And um, so, uh, you know, do you celebrate while you're in another country that doesn't ce celebrate that holiday um, and you're far from your country? Do you try to recreate it? Um, so I guess, you know, let's talk about where will you be, where you will you be in a country that typically celebrates the holidays you do maybe in a different way, um, or maybe you're, you know, going to be in a sunny climate uh, during Christmas and, um, you know, they may, they may uh, celebrate there, but maybe in a different way, um, it might be a little different than what you're used to. Um, so also, do you want to uh, travel to a location that celebrates the holiday well? So a lot of people will go to, um, you know, Christmas markets uh, around Europe, or they'll go um, someday, my girls and I, we hope to go to uh, Sevilla, Spain, where they're really famous for their Easter um, celebration, the Semana Santa. And uh, that's an amazing sight to see. Um, or, um, you know, do you want to go to India for Diwali, you know, or do you, we have been in Turkey when, um, Ramadan was happening. So, uh, we didn't get super into it, but, you know, we were eating when the, the locals were not, but, um, we also went out to, uh, after the sunset went out and ate. And so that was kind of cool to see everyone, um, finally having their meals, um, so the question is, do you uh, really try to make a big deal out of it, specifically fly or, or go to countries where they celebrate either the holidays you're used to or the holidays that they're used to? Um, do you try to rec recreate the festivities where you are? Um, and so since today is Thanksgiving, let's talk about that. Um, you are uh, often you can meet up with other people and either cook together a Thanksgiving dinner or go to a restaurant uh, where they serve uh, Thanksgiving meals. Typically, it's in uh, countries or cities where there's um, plenty of other Americans. Or, you know, I guess if you're um, wanting to celebrate uh, Canadian Thanksgiving, go to a place where you can try to find some Canadians. So, um, you know, you can join the, the various expat Facebook groups. Um, I was in uh, Chiang Mai, Thailand. Uh, without my kids one time, um, actually two years in a row, I think we were there for Christmas, but one year I was there by myself. And so I met up with some friends and we went to um, an expat Christmas where um, most of the people there were, were tired. And I was so used to being around uh, world schooling uh, and expat kind of uh, family friends. Um, so that was kind of interesting. Um, so yeah, often you can make a meal. Sometimes you may not be able to find turkey where you are, um, but uh, you can find roast chicken in many places. So we've actually uh, just ordered from restaurants and just cooked the rest. Um, okay. So then for Christmas, um, there are amazing Christmas markets around the world, um, especially in Europe, uh, Germany, France, Austria, the Czech Republic. I mean, you name it. We were in... Um, well, we were in France last Christmas, but earlier that month we were in Spain and they had really nice Christmas markets um, in the plazas. And it was kind of neat to um, window shop or uh, not window shop, booth shop, I guess, and check out what they had. Um, so some cities and towns have lots of decorations. And, you know, even surprisingly, if you go to Southeast Asia, if you're in a big city like um, Bangkok or Hong Kong or whatever, their shopping malls may be decorated with um, lots of Christmas stuff, even though they're their country doesn't traditionally celebrate um, Christmas, but, you know, they're kind of doing the Santa Claus Christmas. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of fun to go check these places out. Um, 
some of the better hotels will often have a lavish uh, dinner, a buffet with kids activities. They might have a Santa Claus there, a gift exchange, all that. Um, I have in the past, even though I don't typically go to church, I have felt the need to go to church on Christmas just to kind of get that um, festive atmosphere and listen to the music. So that was really fun. Um, you know, and perhaps you will meet up with others for a meal. You, As I mentioned, you can find an expat group and ask a uh, Facebook group and ask there where the good places to go as a family for, um, you know, Christmas or whatever holiday meal. Um, you know, you can go to Christmas fairs organized the, by the, the various, you know, expat or international communities. Um, you can make decorations with paper and other found objects and then um, do kind of a countdown, you know, to Christmas, maybe kind of make your own little advent calendar and give your kids chocolates every day. Um, so yeah, and then, um, you know, you can kind of Google uh, Christmas in what or whatever holiday in, you know, whatever town, just Christmas in Bangkok, and see if there's any blogs or um, news articles about things that are coming up. And also, um, Facebook often has, you know, the events, so you can kind of try to check out events near me coming up. So that's kind of fun. Um, and so, yeah, if, if you're in a country where Christmas is the norm, um, it's um, it's but maybe differently. It's really fun to see how they do it differently and the different foods that they eat and, you know, kind of neat to learn about um, how they do it. Um, we have experienced Christmas in other countries where, you know, like in uh, Colombia, where they're very Catholic and they really do Christmas well. But again, it's a, like a warmer climate and they do it differently. So I'm going to be sharing some fo excuse me, photos in a little bit. Um, so, or do you want to just celebrate with your family, you know, and not try to meet up with others? And that's definitely doable. Um, you know, will you put up any decorations around your Airbnb or hotel or wherever you're staying? Uh, will you actually travel, like pack some special holiday or religious objects? I mean, do you have things small enough that it you can um, put it in your luggage? Um, you know, you can just decorate, um, as we mentioned, make paper decorations. You can kind of make a tree and put it on the wall or even, you know, get a see a potted plant maybe in your Airbnb um, or like even a branch and decorate that you can make decorations um, and that'll be fun for the kids you know pop some popcorn if you can and string them along uh, the tree and um, yeah and you, know, you could buy a point poinsettia a little um, you know a potted plant or two and we have in the past bought um, white lights and um, obviously after Christmas we kept them up for a while and then we donated them afterwards um because it was too much to uh travel around with um but yeah it'd be really neat to um you know make your own christmas decorations especially if you, if you have young kids and um you know just buy a little scotch tape or something that's you know not going to damage the paint there um i have heard that some people even try to do elf on the shelf you can bring your elf or you can try to buy a local elf if you can find one in the country you're at and then name it you know like a, a local name, like Juan or Svet or whatever it is. Um, and then, you know, are you going to be exchanging lots of gifts like you typically do? Um, I mean, as we're traveling, we're kind of trying to be a little bit more minimalistic. And um, so maybe it's better instead of big things to give your kids uh, consumable uh, gifts like coloring books, um, bath bombs or food, chocolate, cocoa mix, um, things like that. Um, or something that's useful for their trip, like a backpack or a little bit of jewelry um, that they can, you know, not too big to carry along. Um, you can, for Advent, you can make little paper envelopes and put little sweets or chocolates in them um, and then peg them on little string and put them up. Um, little small things to fill their stockings. Now, you don't have to buy big Christmas stockings, <laughs> maybe just like buy some Christmas socks or just regular socks. And um, you know, maybe make some cookies on Christmas Eve, uh, you know, make your pancake uh, breakfast for Christmas. You can try to figure that out on the road, kind of like your usual Christmas tra um, traditions. And um, yeah, so that should keep the kids pretty happy, even though your environment is different. You still are continuing some traditions. Um, and yeah, you can just give them like uh, little trinkets uh, in their stockings of what um, you find in the local markets. And, um, you know, maybe keep some traditions going, like maybe every year you give your kids new pajamas. I mean, they grow up. So that's like a good time of year to get them a bigger size and maybe a 
a book that year um, or that month. Um, so uh, the question is, how far do you go to make things special for the kids or do you just not bother at all? Um, I mean, how much into holiday celebrating are you guys? Um, and, uh, you know, some people feel like, oh, back home, we have such a big family. And, you know, the, the grandmothers kind of try to outdo each other with these giant um, Christmas celebrations. And it's like a marathon all throughout uh, December. And, you know, some some of us might be tired of it. It's, it's exhausting. It's, you know, like so many gifts, so much clutter, so much um you know, things kind of wasted, um, you know, you're getting each other gifts that you may or may not need. And there's so much stress and expectations, um, you know, so it's amazing to have the Christmas magic, but um, it's just a lot of stress. So some families love it when they're traveling where they can kind of make it more cozy, low speed, um, you know, just a smaller, authentic family uh, Christmas or whatever holiday you're celebrating. I'm using Christmas as an example now. Um and you can just give each other, you know, Christmas, uh, simple gifts, simple, you know, have simple expectations and, you know, make some homemade treats and just make it really all about just human kindness and reaching out and blessing others. So um, you can really practice minimalism this way. Um, you can give your kids experiences instead of things, um, you know, like you can make little coupons for you know, surfing lessons or something, or just, you know, online out school classes, which you probably pay for anyways, but it's fun to make it a gift uh, or an annual um, subscription to Spotify or Hulu or whatever. Um, so just trying not to accumulate so much stuff while you're traveling, because um, it's just hard to carry all of, all of it with you. Okay, so what to say about Santa or the Easter Bunny or whatever um, is out there. Um, you know, you can track Santa on uh, NORAD. <laughs> they have a website and, you know, Santa does go all around the world. So um, they don't just go to your hometown. They go to um, places in Asia and Africa and all over. So, um, you know, anyway, but, you know, whether or not you want to keep this whole Santa thing going, it's up to you guys. It depends on the age of your kids. Um, often when they start asking, you know, is Santa real? Are you Santa, mom or dad? Uh, this might be the time to, you know, explain that Santa, you know, was a real person. Uh, St. Nicholas, right, I think was a real person. So, you know, even though you're mom and dad and, you know, um, you're not Santa, but Santa has given you a touch of magic. And uh, now the kids uh, know that they have magic, too. Now that they know the secret, um, they're now Santa. So they can give gifts uh, to others and not expect anything in return. So that's Santa's magic, um, the act of giving without wanting in return. And this is a great lesson for kids to eventually learn to do, or at least to reciprocate. Um, but yeah, the truth is St. Nick, Nick, uh, apparently he was a real person. And, you know, you could just say people continued um, his traditions after he died. And um, it's also a great um, time to uh, volunteer. Um, again, there may or may not be Christmas volunteer opportunities or whatever holiday, um, but you can probably try to find something um, in your area. You can find a local organization and, and volunteer your time there or give gifts, buy gifts for those people. Um, and, you know, again, since you'll be in different countries, um, you know, with many people in need, possibly, I mean, I don't know where you're going to be going, but if you're going to a lower cost of living developing country, um, this might be a great time for you to be the Santa uh, for them. And, um, you know, so you can make new holiday traditions. Um, you know, you don't have to stick with the ones you had back home, just improvise a little bit, or you can just not do so much. And, you know, it's okay to grieve that, you know, things are changing now with your uh, traveling nomadic lifestyle. There's pros and cons to this lifestyle. Um, but it's also a very much a learning uh, and world schooling opportunity for your kids. Um, you, they can learn, use this opportunity to learn more about holidays that, you know, you as a family celebrate. Um, you can compare it, as I mentioned, as how they do it or don't do it in um, the place you, you currently are. Um, and also, I highly encourage you to celebrate the local holidays. Um, you might happen upon, you know, a holiday while you're there in the country, or you might even be intentionally planning to go to certain countries um, famous for doing, you know, certain holidays really big. Um, so think about how your family celebrates the holidays. And um, I'm going to try to see if I can share my screen um 
Okay, and then I'm going to share some photos. Here we go. I'm going to do a slideshow and um, show you some of our. Um, whoops, it's got to create it. <laughs> I'm going to show you some of our um, holiday pictures um, from our travels over the last six years, and uh, we have been, you know, in 20 different countries over the last six years. So um, I wanted to share some of that. Sorry, I should have set this up before we went. And let me take this opportunity to, to make sure I am live on Facebook. I think I am. Yes, okay, good. Um, all right, so this should be going up pretty soon. Um, let me turn off, you don't need to see the, hear the music. Okay, so um, this was in Chiang Mai, Thailand, where uh, we met up with some uh, friends. We've actually, um, the couple in the front in the blue, they we've met them in three different countries, maybe four. Um, so they've become really good friends of ours. And, um, and our kids have become friends too. So we found a restaurant in Chiang Mai, Thailand. It was a kind of a bar and grill that uh, served a Thanksgiving meal. Um, they also had salmon and, and pumpkin pie. So that was really fun for us to go and hang out with other uh, Americans and Canadians, I think. And then even afterwards, we went up and met with some more families. Um, and uh, the guy with the beard, we've met him and his wife and kids in, I think, four different countries over like a three-year three, three year period. We're still in touch. Hope to see them again in the future. And then I just wanted to show you a few things we did uh, be either before or after the holiday ce celebration. We went zip lining. Um, it was super fun. And um, okay, so then this is Thanksgiving in Medellin, Colombia. An expat there, an American, invited a bunch of people over for a buffet. And we all, it was potluck, so we all um, brought something. I think I was traveling with my Instant Pot at the time, and I made this apple crumb. Um, yeah, so this, uh, this is the parents afterwards, and the kids are hanging out watching a movie. Um, and then the day or two after, we went to a restaurant, and we ate Colombian food, lots of rice and beans and meat and sausages and avocados, um, and went and visited the Botero sculptures in the nearby plaza. So I just wanted to kind of show you a little sneak peek of what we were doing in the days um, after. And then this was um, actually Playa del Carmen, uh, Mexico. Um, we had just arrived, so we didn't know that many people, but I found out that some expats were doing a um, Thanksgiving uh, event. And um, at this place, you know, you pay a little money and they had some food. For some reason, the mashed potatoes were green. <laughs> uh, they had music there, so it was really fun. So we didn't know anyone yet because we had just arrived in town. Um, but yeah, we were able to have somewhat, I think that was a little bit of turkey and, and pumpkin pie. That was really nice. Um, so that was cool. And there was some face painting there. Um, and then the next following days, we went to the beach uh, with a bunch of other, you know, European and American and Canadian friends. Now, this was... Um, Thanksgiving in Playa del Carmen, oops, Playa del Carmen, uh, Mexico. This is during the pandemic. So this gal to the left is uh, live with us. She was our um, nanny slash cook because I was working a ton at the time. And uh, so we got, I was a member of Costco <laughs> and this was in Puebla and we got a pecan pie and made mashed potatoes. And then I think at Costco, they also had a uh, slice breast of turkey and gravy. So Anyway, the, the following days, we drove to Texas, uh, we went to the Alamo and met up with some uh, online school friends that lived in Dallas, and I so sold the car and we, we flew to um, the Republic of Georgia. Okay, so then this is the following Thanksgiving where um, we were in the south of Spain in La Jaradura, and we did a, a buffet with other world schoolers um, there. And, you know, this is kind of in the middle of the pandemic, uh, well, kind of the later part. So 2021, yeah, last year. And uh, it was kind of the first time that we had been indoors without a mask, um, you know, with some other people and eating food. Now, unfortunately, afterwards, oh, I made that stuffing. And then I made um, Brussels sprouts with uh, uh, local um, ham. But it was really cool um, because, um, you know, we, we got to see a bunch of people and we were indoors. And unfortunately, as I mentioned, uh, I was trying to mention, uh, there was a COVID outbreak with some people after we left, which is too bad. Okay, so but afterwards, um, here are some um, kids that um, my girls have become really good friends with. So my girls on the left, and then the girl in green, we've seen them in four countries. And recently, we saw them a week ago. Um, the girl, the blonde girl we saw in Mexico, then here in Spain, and the boy in black on the right, we have seen him 
in Me we met him in Mexico with his mom and here in S Spain and then in uh, Bulgaria, where we went to this ski pop up for a few months. And then I visited his um, him and his parents in Vancouver, Canada. So just to let you know, we do see these families again and again sometimes. Um, and then shortly after I rented this camper van and we drove around Sp Spain, here we are near Gibraltar. And I met up with some old friends that I knew from like 20 years ago when I was learning Spanish in Spain. Um, and my girls and I with the camper van went to these really amazing little cute towns in South of Spain. Um, okay, so then let's jump to Christmas. Now this was, uh, I know it looks weird with the plastic. I bought some uh, little plastic cellophane and we I hired a nanny uh, who spoke English in Chiang Mai, Thailand. Uh, I was hoping that they would cut things up and kind of decorate the, um, you know, leftover cereal boxes, but they wrapped it up. So that was our tree that year. And we, we found some hats and um, that's the carrot and the cookie for uh, Santa and his reindeer. Um, my girls made a card and for Santa and his reindeer. And uh, the next day, um, I, they opened their presents. I got them these cute little colorful backpacks. They actually still have them. I think one of them has a broken zipper. We're not using it anymore. But the other one we use all the time for six years. Um, they were handmade little backpacks that we got. And then, you know, they also opened up a little presents. I think I got them shop cans and other really little small Yes, but this is where we were staying in Chiang Mai, Thailand in a two bedroom apartment, but we had three beds. <laughs> this sofa bed was one of the girls slept in that uh, and we had to buy sheets oddly. And so we bought these funny um, watermelon sheets. Um, OK, so then afterwards, we went to another um, world schoolers apartment and hung out with them for Christmas and the kids um, were, you know, on their devices. Now it's a couple, two different uh, families here. We have seen them multiple times. There's a couple that lives in Canada. Um, so we met with them twice in Canada uh, to visit them. And another couple we met here in Thailand and twice, uh, another two times in Mexico. Um, and this, this is just photos of what we did the following day after Christmas. Um, okay, so then the next year we were in Medellin, Colombia, um, and it's you know, a high elevation, but it's still pretty warm. So, uh, you know, we're wearing shorts and t-shirts and, um, they uh, have this amazing giant park where they have lots of, uh, Christmas lights. So we went and checked that out. And then, um, we were actually doing a homestay at the time, living with a Colombian family to kind of, um, practice our Spanish. Um, so they leading up to Christmas for many days got together as a family and maybe some neighbors. And uh, they got together for kind of a social thing, but also to read out of the Bible and, and talk about Chris, uh, Christmas coming up. Um, it was like a very big uh, religious Catholic thing that they were doing in Colombia. Now, I don't we don't I don't think we do that in the States. We don't like meet up with our relatives for multiple days before um, Christmas. So that was kind of interesting to learn about that. And then they invited us to uh, one of the, their houses up in um, up on the mountain. So it was kind of cooler there. And this was their Christmas decoration. They have like Mary and Jesus there. And this is the Christmas loot. They actually asked me since I was kind of like the, the newbie um, to be Santa. And I would, you know, like get the present, read who it's for and say, here is a gift for you from baby Jesus. It was hilarious. So I was Santa that year. Um, and this is the lovely house um, that we stayed in the morning after. And uh, I guess this is Christmas Day. And um, so instead of a turkey, this is what they make for Christmas, a giant stew and uh, with meats and uh, potatoes and corn and stuff. Uh, so that was interesting. My kids were like, what is this? <laughs> but they they had it because they were hungry. There was no other option. Um, okay, in the days after we went to this really cool uh, neighborhood uh, that used to be a very poor neighborhood in Medellin, um, but it's been revitalized. Uh, there's tons of murals there. Um, and there's lots of stairs because it's on the hills and they the government years ago built these escalators to go up and down. So it really helped cut down on the crime rate because then people could e more easily take um, the escalators down into the main part of the city to get a job versus, I don't know, dealing in drugs. And, you know, this is when the whole Pablo Escobar thing was going on in that country. So anyway, it's been really revitalized. It's really nice um, to go up there. Okay, let's see. I guess this is another potluck. Oh, yeah, this is a Christmas potluck in uh, Chiang Mai. I went back um, by myself because I was working on a, a business project there. And it was with a bunch of retired people. It was hilarious. So it was a different scene. I made a really wonderful Christmas salad with pomegranate seeds, goat cheese, um, I think apples and or maybe oranges. I don't know, with walnuts, 
no, it was uh, sliced almonds. It was hard to find the ingredients. I had to go to like two or different um, stores, but let me know if you want the recipe. It's the best salad I've ever had. Okay, so the following year we were in um, Playa del Carmen, Mexico. So this was different because it was quite tropical and it was a beach location. Um, and, you know, it was still nice. The weather was nice. I mean, not as hot as uh, in obviously in the summertime, which I prefer. Um, so it was great weather. And um, then afterwards, um, the next that night, I guess we the plaza had like really cute little lighted Christmas um, decorations where you can go and take pictures. And then the following days, we went to this um, Mayan ruin and we rented bikes um, to get around. Uh, and then we went up and down these giant py pyramids. It was so cool um, to go to that. So very different Christmas uh, situation. OK, so here we are. The year later, this is during the pandemic, I got a special permission, I filled out a special like visa paperwork to be able to go to the Republic of Georgia, because we were really kind of, uh, we were in uh, Mexico for 14 months. And I really wanted to change and the Republic of Georgia was opening up for a uh, digital nomad. So I got a special digital nomad permit, and we were able to learn to ski while we were there. And this was still during the pandemic. Um, so we had to actually do all this paperwork. We had to take four flights. I actually sold my car. I forgot to mention that I drove my car from Seattle all the way down to Playa del Carmen. And, you know, we lived in Mexico for 14 months. So it was good to have a car. And then I drove my car to Dallas to sell it. Um, so then we flew to, uh, to Tbilisi, Georgia, and we had to be in quarantine in a hotel for nine nights and then pass a PCR test until we were let free. And so uh, one of the first things we did was go to a local mall because we we had to um, buy sheets for our new apartment. Sometimes when you get an apartment, they don't provide sheets, which is kind of funny. Anyway, so um, we also hired a, a driver to drive us around town um, just to check out all the Christmas decorations and lights that were there. So that was kind of, again, during the pandemic, you know, there's only so much you can do um, because not a lot of stuff were, were open. That mall was only open certain um, hours or days. It was kind of odd. Anyway, so then, um, yeah, so we went, went out. Um, I ordered food delivery. I think we moved in like Christmas Day or Christmas Eve. And then I was able to find a place that, that had Christmas cookies. Um, and then, you know, what we do, this is a video of us. You can't hear us, but we're saying Merry Christmas to my mom. And a lot of times we will send a message to my mom, um, you know, for, during the holidays or her birthday. Um, I mean, we could do a Facebook or not a Facebook live. We can do like a, a you know, a, a video call with her FaceTime. But sometimes we like to send, send her um, uh, video messages so she can replay them when she wants. Um, and this is the apartment that <clears throat> we lived in in Medellin or in Tbilisi, Georgia. Had a beautiful view. Again, things were a lot of things were closed. We didn't really do too many exciting things except for go to the park and just hang out in our apartment and look at the view. <laughs> it was really neat. Um, okay, so last Christmas was really exciting. We went to France. Uh, to visit my friend who I met in Spain maybe 20 years ago. So um, this is us right before Christmas. We went to a, a restaurant with um, some of her friends and had amazing oysters and champagne and foie gras. And the food was amazing, cute little desserts. And then the day of um, Christmas, or no, Christmas Eve, she hosted at her apartment that she just bought. So it was, it was a new apartment. She was still decorating. We stay there actually um, on mattresses on the floor because she didn't have everything set up yet, but it was awesome. And her parents came over um, and her brother-in-law who brought tons of uh, oysters from Normandy. And so we had this three hour dinner, at least three hours, maybe four hours. They had multiple courses. And of course you're talking throughout and drinking lots of French wine and champagne and Prosecco. This family actually is part Italian. And it was so yummy and lovely. And we ate so much. And I I think I bought, or maybe the next one, I, I, I think I bought one of those um, for my contribution. Uh, oh yeah, the next day, Christmas Day, we went to her sister's house and uh, we ate another three to four hour dinner, <clears throat> oysters again. <laughs> And, uh, oh, Aubrey decided to uh, try escargot, uh, which I have tried in the past, but I don't know. I kind of chickened out this time, but she loved them. My friend was trying to teach her how to eat escargot. So again, these are foods that we don't typically eat for Christmas in the U.S. And so it was really great for um, my girls to be able to experience new foods and new traditions. Uh, three, four hour dinner. <laughs> oh my gosh, it was incredible. 
Okay. So, oh yeah. This is the, the dessert that I bought. It's called a bouche. And yeah, you have to go bouche. You have to really pronounce it in a way, pushing your lips up. So they took a picture of me and this, that's the inside of the dessert with raspberries inside. And after we went to this beautiful castle nearby and it was all decorated for Christmas and you can walk around and um, they had like you know, stuff going on and cute little decorations. So it was a blast to hang out and have a very authentic, um, oh, let me stop this, a very authentic French um, Christmas. Well, they're, they live near Geneva. So it was in Annecy. Okay. So a couple of days later or a day or two later, we were on um, a train and then a flight um, to go to another country. Now we were trying to get to Bulgaria, but at the time um, they were very strict in where, you know, you had to be vaccinated to come in and had to have a um, bunch of stuff. So a PCR test, I think, and you couldn't come from a red country. Um, so most of Europe at the time was a red country and France just became a red country at the time. So the only countries in that area that we, we would have to go to before we came to Bulgaria was Portugal and Spain, which we just spent time there earlier and Italy. So we decided spontaneously, I mean, we had to, to go to Rome for a few days. I mean, of course we could have just flown in and take the, taken the next flight to Sofia, but we decided to spend a few days in Rome and see the sites. And this was December 26th, 7th, 8th. We were there um, kind of in between Christmas and New Year. So we enjoyed um, uh, uh, that holiday time in Rome, and then we were able to get on a flight. Okay, so now I'm going to jump to um, Easter. We were spending time. Um, I had to, I decided to, I didn't want to get in trouble <laughs> for having naked children uh, or half naked children on uh, Facebook or YouTube. So I, I, whatever, I did what I had to do. Um, so we were in, uh, for Easter, we were in Thailand in this beach town. It was really hot. This is why my girls are only wearing underwear and, uh, super hot. We had this cute little colorful, um, I'll go back colorful pink bungalow. And, uh, yeah, so again, not much going on, but I was able to find these little, uh, kinder eggs and just other chocolate and even twin burgers, which my twins thought was really great. And yeah, they just ate that. So hopefully you can buy chocolate all over the world and try to do something for Easter. Now, this was in Medellin, Colombia. Um, and it was really cool because this expat family kind of uh, organized um, a, an Easter egg hunt. So we were all required to bring uh, little plastic um, eggs filled with um, M&Ms or, you know, whatever chocolates. And then we hid them and the kids um, had an Easter egg hunt. So it was really nice. So these are people who live there um, full time. And, um, oh, the dad walking away with the camera um, on the left. We have seen him and his wife uh, again, and their kids in four different countries. So um, they're great. Anyway, so um Sometimes expat families are very open to hanging out with world schoolers. Sometimes I'm in a place where they don't even bother because they know we're kind of passing through. Um, anyway, Medellin, Colombia is a great, uh, really wonderful city. It was, um, I think it's getting, it has some crime. So you got to be careful of where you go. Um, but uh, we were in this nice poblado, poblano, I can't remember the, how to pronounce it, uh, neighborhood. And, uh, you know, there's all these like gated communities and, and buildings with security and all that kind of stuff. Um, really affordable um, cost of living. So that was fun. And this is uh, the kids eating their loot. And the days after we're hang out, hung out with our friends in a swimming pool. And th these are the friends that we've seen in four different countries. Um, okay, so then this past Easter, we were in um, Fethiye, Turkey, and we didn't really do anything Easter-like, but I just wanted to share you that that particular day, we were with a bunch of um, other world schoolers, and one of them is traveling around the world um, in an RV, and we did a book exchange, which was fun, and then we got together with friends who we had met earlier in, in um, Bulgaria, and we also hung out with some of them in Istanbul, and here we are in Fethiye. Um, okay, so let's jump to Halloween. Um, our first Halloween traveling abroad, we were in Japan outside of Osaka. And um, yeah, so we were invited. This wonderful woman owns a um, preschool or no, an English school in outside of Osaka. And she's from Canada. And she invited us to this giant uh, Halloween festival. And I helped by giving out candy. There was games and stuff. Um, so it was amazing to hang out with a bunch of uh, little cute little Japanese kids for um, Halloween. And then the days after we went to these beautiful Japanese gardens and temples, um, hung out with some other friends. Okay, then the following Christmas or Easter, 
sorry, Halloween, I think we were in Mexico in San Miguel de Ende, where there's a, a big um, family adventure summit, which is no longer, sorry, guys, it ran for three years, years in a row. So we went to this one and it was right around um, Halloween and Day of the Dead, Dia de las Muertes. So we, you know, there they honor their, their deceased and they make these, um, I guess these, I don't know, what do you call them? These, uh, these, these, um, Oh gosh, I forget the name of it. We created one too to honor my dad who had passed away. Um, and so there was a Halloween party at the during the thing. And uh, yeah, so this boy we saw a week or two ago. They were driving through Seattle, and he is now six over six feet tall, um, and still I think only fourteen. So um, we saw them again, and this is his mom who had this fantastic uh, costume. It was. Uh, gosh, when was this? 2018. So think about what was going on in our political system during that time. Anyway, and then on the street the next day or two, um, people were dressing up for um, Day, of, Day of the Dead. And we got to decorate our face. We painted each other's faces um, in the style of Dia de las Muertes. And uh, we hung out with some friends going to the local cemetery. There's so many uh, people leaving flowers and uh, doing lots of cool things. This this girl, uh, hopefully I'll interview her in the future. She uh, is a 20 something now and she grew up world schooling and amazing now. Um, went to the you know university, has a successful career. She's wonderful. So I really want to interview her. Her name's Hannah. Um, okay, so yeah, we just kind of, we bought these dresses, which we, my girls you wore for Halloween two years in a row. Um, okay, this is the following year in Playa del Carmen and they're wearing the same dresses. And we met up with some friends um, and we went to the, you know, the local street where the vendors were giving or the shopkeepers were giving out candy. Um, and then the day or two after we went to a Dia de las Muertes um, celebration festival and saw what's going on. Th this is what we did the day after we went to the cenote and went jumping inside this wonderful, clear, um, fresh water. And okay, so then the following year, I think we spent three years in a row, uh, Halloween three years in a row in Mexico. This was in, in Puebla. And we met up with some, again, this is during COVID. Uh, we met up with some, uh, you know, local kids, uh, expats, and we, um, you know, there was stuff going on at this place where they get to decorate their own Halloween cookies. And then um, with our nanny slash cook, um, we went out trick or treating to local shops. And okay, then last Halloween, we were in La Herradura, Spain, and hung out with a whole bunch of um, world schoolers and expats who live there. It's quite the world school hub, informal hub. So there was a party, and these are the teens kind of doing, playing a game or doing their own thing. And um, yeah, so there was a party that was uh, going on and food and beer and stuff that you can get. So lots of fun. Um, and the day after, I think the mamas are hanging out at the beach and our kids were doing this uh, exercising with a personal trainer and having fun and enjoying the sunset. So, yeah, I think that's it for, um, for, for the holiday photos. Hope that helped you kind of see what we've done during the holidays. And um, please let me know, like, what are you planning to do uh, for your holidays and um, are you going to be uh, trying to celebrate your, your typical holidays while you travel? Are you going to try to uh, learn about the new holidays uh, in the places you're at? Um, let me know if, if holidays is a big deal for you and, and for your kids and whether or not you want to kind of keep traditions going. So hope that helped. And um, please let me know if you have any questions about this topic. Bye.